welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. Today I am starting a brand new, highly, highly requested video series here on my channel where I'm going to basically be talking Clean Eating 101. As you know or you may not know, I did switch over to Clean Eating about a week and a half ago or so where I shifted my whole WW plan from not only from the green plan to the blue plan, but I also changed my entire eating style from processed foods, sugar-free, fat-free foods to a whole food, clean eating approach to WW. I have eliminated all fat-free out of my diet. 99% of processed foods, unless it is a healthy processed food, which there isn't a whole lot of those out there. I do have those on occasion, and I am slowly, completely eliminating sugar-free everything from my diet. I did wanna use up what I had on hand in both my refrigerator and in my pantry, so I've been kind of doing that easily got rid of the fat free and am slowly getting rid of all sugar free. And with that, I've had to, of course, completely change and restructure the foods that I'm eating. So I did a lot of research prior to making this transition and I'm continuing to research as I'm making this transition, asking you guys for feedback on things that you wanna know about clean eating and how to fit that into WW. I've also gotten a lot of comments saying that there's no way to eat clean on WW because we're penalized for high fat. That's not true, my friends. I promise you there is a way to incorporate clean eating into all three WW plants, purple, blue, and green. So today we're gonna start off this Clean Eating 101 series and we are going to talk about what is called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. I'm going to share what the Dirty Dozen is for you and why those foods are on the Dirty Dozen list, and also what the Clean 15 list is and why those foods are on the Clean 15. So let's jump right into what the heck is the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. I'm gonna run from my given disaster. Speed away from the holy mind. So let's first start with the Dirty Dozen. What are the 12 dirtiest foods? Now, everything I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is produce, so fruits and vegetables that fall on these lists. So what is the Dirty Dozen list and how are these items put onto this list? So I wanted to talk a little bit about how these fruits and vegetables have been deemed part of the Dirty Dozen. So let's jump into the reasons why these were put on the Dirty Dozen list. These fruits and vegetables were tested. 38,000 of these particular fruits and vegetables were tested for pesticides. The number of pesticides, the percentage of pesticides is what makes a produce item either a dirty item or a clean item. And when a produce item is designated on the dirty dozen or a dirty item, it is highly recommended that you purchase this item as organic so that you can alleviate the use of these extra exorbitant amounts of pesticides. If they are found to be on the clean 15, then these are foods that you don't necessarily have to purchase as organic, but it is still recommended that all of your produce, fruits and vegetables are purchased organic just because they taste better, they're healthier for you, and they're less full of pesticides and things that you don't wanna put in your body. So of those 38 samples tested, they are looking for the number of pesticides per sample. So if they are testing apples, they are looking for the number of pesticides that are in any given one of those 38,000 apples. That number of pesticides will determine whether it is considered the dirty dozen or the clean 15. Also to be put on the dirty dozen, they're looking for the number or the percent of pesticides that contain two or more. So if that apple has two or more high levels of pesticides, it's considered a dirty dozen. Also the average number of pesticides in each sample. So they're gonna take that apple, they're going to count the number of pesticides that are in that apple, and if it is a large number, it's put on the dirty dozen list. Also, they're looking for the average amount per million in these sample sizes of pesticides. So in the event that this apple had one parts per million pesticides, it's probably not gonna make it on the dirty dozen list. But if it has a high amount of pesticides per million, it is definitely going to be added to the dirty dozen. And the last two things they are looking for when determining whether an item is on the dirty dozen is the max 
number of pesticides per sample and the total number of pesticides per sample. So in a nutshell, in order for one of these produce items to fall on the dirty dozen list, it has to have an extremely high percentage of pesticides and number of pesticides per sample. So again, you guys, we don't want to ingest pesticides and we're talking Roundup. We're talking human carcinogenic pesticides that are on these fruits and vegetables. And in order for us to not consume an exorbitant amount of these, we need to stay away from conventional, which is another term for non-organic fruits and vegetables that are on the dirty dozen list. So let's talk about the 12 fruits and vegetables that you should always, always buy organic and why. Number one on the dirty dozen list is strawberries. Now strawberries are on this list because out of every three samples tested, there were 10 or more pesticides, 10 or more pesticides on a single strawberry. So strawberry hit the dirty dozen list because they are packed full of human carcinogenic pesticides. So very, very important that you buy your strawberries organic. Number two is spinach, and this is huge. 97% of the spinach samples tested had pesticides, 97%. So that means if you have 100 spinach leaves, 97 of those have pesticides on them. Leafy greens are generally really full of pesticides because they grow on the ground and they are sprayed heavily throughout the growing process. So you're gonna see a lot of leafy greens and fruits and vegetables that you eat the shell or the peel of on the dirty dozen list. Because you are consuming the entire fruit or vegetable like spinach, generally those full of pesticides will fall here on the dirty dozen list. So spinach, always buy organic. Number three is kale. And this one is scary guys. Kale absolutely must always be purchased organically. And that is because 92% of kale on the market has pesticides. And most of those have 18% or more pesticides per sample. That is a lot on a single sample of kale. And the worst part about kale is 60% of kale. So over half of the kale, conventional non-organic kale on the market contains DCPA, which is a human carcinogen. So do not under any circumstances ingest kale that is not organic. It is literally one of the number one produce items that is riddled with pesticides. Number four is nectarines. Nectarines, 94% of them have 15 or more pesticides. 94% with over 15 pesticides. And if you're noticing again a pattern in the Dirty Dozen, these are fruits and vegetables that we consume the entire thing. So we're eating the skin as well. The skin is where a lot of pesticides live. And so you'll notice on the Clean 15 when we jump over there that a lot of those foods, we don't eat the skin because we can remove it and eliminate a lot of the pesticides. But on the Dirty Dozen, we are consuming the entire fruit or vegetable. So we are eating the skin where all of those pesticides live. And nectarine is a huge one for that. We eat the skin and they're heavily sprayed to prevent worms and other bugs eating them so that they can sell them on the open market. So nectarines, buy them organic. Number five are apples. And again, we are consuming the entire apple. 80% of apples sampled had high levels of pesticides. And on top of those high levels of pesticides, I'm going to put here on the screen what the name of this chemical is because I'm probably going to slaughter it. Apples, 80% of them contain diphenyamine, which is a pesticide that was banned in Europe because it is not safe for human consumption. So apples, definitely put on your list to purchase only organic. Number six on the Dirty Dozen are grapes. Again, we eat the entire grape. 96% of grapes that were tested were full of pesticides. Those pesticides, again, live in the skin of the grapes. And all we do is pull them off the stem and pop them in our mouth. They're sweet. They're delicious. They're crunchy. They fuel us with energy and they cure our sweet tooth, but they also have a lot a lot of pesticides we shouldn't be eating. So grapes should also always be purchased organic. Number seven are peaches. 99% of the peaches tested contained four or more high levels of pesticides. 
You guys, that's 99 in 100 peaches. And what's the likelihood that you're getting the one peach that doesn't have four or more pesticides? So because we eat the entire peach, and we can wash, you guys, we can wash our fruit all we want. We can't wash out the pesticides that have soaked into the skin and into the fruit itself. So peaches, definitely with a 99% pesticide rate, should be organic. Number eight are cherries. In the samples tested of cherries, they included five or more pesticides. All cherries contain five or more pesticides when they are not purchased organic. And again, on the screen here, I'll put the name of the other chemical found in cherries. That is called iprodine, which is another chemical that has been banned in Europe because it is not safe for human consumption. So I don't know about you, but I'm not really interested in eating Monsanto pesticides or pesticides that have been banned in other countries because they're not safe for consumption. So cherries, again, on your list of only buy organic. Number nine are pears. 50% of the pears tested contained five or more pesticides. Again, we eat the entire pear, skin included. So pears are another one that should be added to your organic only list. Number 10 are tomatoes. And this is big tomatoes, small tomatoes, you name it, tomatoes in general. Contain four pesticides. Some tomatoes tested had 15 or more. And again, we eat the entire tomato. So make sure that you are buying your tomatoes, big, small, medium, organic. Number 11 is celery. So celery contains a ton of pesticides, 95% of the celery tested contain pesticides, some of those 11 or more. Celery is so inexpensive. It is such a good vegetable for you to eat. It's very, very minimal in calories. You can top it with fun things like cream cheese and peanut butter, and you can get a really good snack, but make sure whether you wash it or not, that your celery is always organic. And number 12 on the dirty dozen list are potatoes. Potatoes on average contain more pesticides than any of the other 11 fruits and vegetables on the dirty dozen list. Whether it is a red potato, a fingerling, a sweet potato, even though we are sometimes removing the skin, they still contain more pesticides than any other fruit or vegetable. So they're is no question on whether or not you should be purchasing any type of potato strictly organic. And an honorable mention as far as the Dirty Dozen goes are hot peppers. Things like jalapenos and those little teeny habanero peppers, those also contain quite a lot of pesticides. So they're kind of an honorable mention here on the list and another item that you should be focusing on purchasing organic. So that my friends is the dirty dozen with an honorable mention of fruits and vegetables that should be added to your grocery list to purchase strictly organic. And as you know, I've been doing this myself. In fact, I've decided to shift all of my produce over to organic when Ever, whenever possible, whenever I can find them. But you'll notice that they are a little bit more expensive, but overall in the big picture, they are cents more than conventional produce. They are much healthier for you, less pesticides, and just an overall better quality fruit or vegetable. You get more vitamins from these dirty dozen fruits and vegetables than some of the clean 15. So it's important that we're still eating these. We're just making a good choice and purchasing them on the organic side of the produce aisle. So again, the dirty dozen, always organic. So let's jump into what is called the clean 15. So what is the clean 15? This means that these are the 15 fruits and vegetables that they found the least amount of pesticides in. Most of, if not all of these vegetables have a skin on them, a skin or a rind that we don't eat. So again, that is another reason why they are different than the Dirty Dozen. The Dirty Dozen, we eat the entire fruit or vegetable, skin included. The Clean 15, we generally remove the skin or the rind before eating. So we're removing a lot of the pesticides that are found in the Dirty Dozen. So these 15 fruits and vegetables are recommended that you purchase organic, but you can buy conventional and feel confident that you're not eating a lot or an excess amount of pesticides. So number one on the Clean 15 are avocados. And the reason avocados fall on the Clean 15 is because they have that thick skin around them that the pesticides can't actually penetrate the avocado itself. When testing avocados, less than 1% of them contained 
pesticides. So that's excellent news. You can, of course, still buy any of the Clean 15 organic if that's your choosing, but you can save yourself a little bit of money and feel confident in buying your avocados conventional. Number two is sweet corn. Less than 2% of sweet corn tested positive for pesticides, but when they did the Clean 15 testing, they did not test for glycosate, which is basically Roundup. So corn could potentially contain Roundup. That was not tested as part of the pesticides. So again, this is why I say for me, I'm just going to focus on all organic produce whenever possible, just so that I'm not unintentionally eating things such as Roundup. So I'm going to make sure that my fruits and vegetables are for the most part, 99% whenever possible organic. But sweet corn does fall as number two on the Clean 15. Number three is pineapple. And pineapple is on the Clean 15 because again, it has that thick skin. We remove the skin before we eat the pineapple and the pesticides just can't penetrate that skin and actually get to that sweet, delicious inside of the pineapple. I have never seen organic pineapple, but we don't have a Whole Foods here. And I'm sure that those stores that sell strictly organic produce probably do have organic pineapple. But because of that thick skin, you can feel confident in purchasing just a regular conventional pineapple and saving yourself some money. Number four is cabbage. 86% of cabbage tested contained very, very small amounts or no traces of pesticides. Cabbage actually has a naturally occurring chemical that repels bugs. So you don't get a lot of bugs in the farms eating the cabbage, so they don't have to heavily spray those with pesticides. So cabbage falls on the clean 15 strictly because one, it has that naturally releasing chemical that bugs apparently don't like. So two, they aren't sprayed with pesticides. So you can feel confident in consuming conventional cabbage. And if you didn't know, a little fun fact, cabbage really helps reduce heart related issues. So cabbage is a good quality crunch to add to your salads or to make cabbage soup or pickle it and add it to your meals. Cabbage is just an overall extremely healthy vegetable. Number five are onions. And again, we remove the peel of our onions so it prevents us from eating a lot of the chemicals. Less than 10% of onions tested had pesticides. And did you know another fun fact that onions really help, again, with heart-related issues. They have flavornol, flavornols? flavornols in there that help with heart disease. So onions are a great produce item to add to your meals. And again, you can be confident in purchasing those conventional. Number six are frozen peas. 86% of frozen peas tested contained little or no pesticides. Now, on a caveat to that, if you are buying snap peas and you are eating the entire snap pea, then you definitely want to pick those up organic because those have a lot of pesticides that you're ingesting when you're eating the entire snap pea. But if you're buying frozen peas at your local supermarket, you don't have to worry about spending the extra money on organic because they just don't contain a lot of pesticides. Number seven are papayas. 80% of papayas tested contained little to no pesticides. And I actually have some notes written here and I wanna read you guys some of the benefits of papayas. These are an amazing super fruit. So papayas are great for vitamin C. They actually have 144 percent of your recommended daily intake of vitamin C. So that's amazing. Also in one cup of papaya, you have fiber, vitamin A, folate, and 144% of your vitamin C. Now, if you are concerned about GMO, then I'd highly recommend buying your papayas organic. But if you're just wanting to eliminate a lot of those excess pesticides, then conventional papayas are the way to go and they are so incredibly good for you. Number eight is asparagus. Asparagus, 90% tested, really low on the scale of pesticides. They also have a naturally occurring barrier against the pesticides soaking into the actual asparagus. So even though we eat the entire spear, it still is a conventional safe produce item to get. So save yourself some money on the organic asparagus and be confident that just the naturally occurring barrier of asparagus doesn't allow those pesticides to penetrate the part that we're eating. Number nine is mango. 78% of mangoes tested, 
contain little to no pesticides, so they definitely fall on the clean 15. And I also have some fun information for you guys about mangoes. So mangoes, one cup of mangoes has 76% of your recommended daily intake of vitamin C and 25% of your recommended daily intake of vitamin A. So mangoes, again, are packed with vitamins that help you stay healthy, you feel full, they have some fiber in them, and of course, mangoes are absolutely delicious. So mangoes, fall on the clean 15. Number 10 is eggplant. So eggplant not only makes a great meat substitute, but eggplant call comes here on the clean 15 because 78% of eggplant tested, they didn't find large amounts of pesticides. And again, generally we remove the skin of the eggplant, not always, but generally we, we do. And because that skin is so thick and hardy, the pesticides don't actually enter the eggplant. So eggplant, falls on the clean 15 as well. Number 11 is honeydew melon. 50% of honeydew melon tested were low on the pesticide scale. And honeydew melon, I never knew this, is actually extremely good for you. So here is some fun facts on honeydew melon. 53% of your recommended daily intake in one cup of honeydew melon in vitamin C. Honeydew melon is a great source of potassium and it's extremely hydrating because it's made up of 90% water. So on a hot summer day or after a workout, having honeydew melon is a great fruit choice because it will help rehydrate your body after being out in the sun or an intense workout and all of those extra vitamin benefits. And on the clean 15, honeydew melon is a must have. Number 12 are kiwis. So kiwis again have a skin that we don't eat. So kiwis are generally very low in pesticides and again some great nutritional value in a kiwi. So in a kiwi 65% of the kiwis tested contained trace amounts of pesticides. That's great. That's over 50%. So kiwi is a great choice. Not only is it a great choice pesticide wise, they have great fiber and vitamin C. 100 and 77% of your recommended daily intake in one, one medium kiwi. So it's a great fruit choice. It's satisfying. It's a little sweet, a little tangy. So highly recommend kiwis and don't stress out about buying them organic. Number 13 is cantaloupe. 60% of cantaloupe tested, low to minimal pesticides. There is a few things that I wanna share with you regarding cantaloupe. First is, it's very important when you buy cantaloupe, whether it's conventional or organic, that you take it home and you wash it under cold water, the rind itself, with a scrub brush. And really, really scrub that because those rinds are extra dirty. And if there are any pesticides in your cantaloupe, that's where it's going to live. So I usually buy cantaloupe, take it home, scrub it under some cold water, and then put it aside and dry it out real good before I go ahead and cut it up. But cantaloupe, my friends, um, has one, cu one cup of cantaloupe has 100% of your recommended daily intake of vitamin A and C. So you can have a cup of cantaloupe and you've met your dietary guidelines for vitamin A and C for the entire day. How amazing is that? Number 14 is our WW tried and true cauliflower. Now cauliflower, not only is it really good for you and extremely low in points, we find this substitute dupe in pizza, rice, you name it, cauliflower mash. Cauliflower also falls on the clean 15 and cauliflower is extremely good for you. So 50% of the cauliflower tested was great on pesticides, so that's excellent news. One cup of cauliflower gives you 77% of your recommended daily intake of vitamin C. So you're getting vitamin C out of a vegetable. How cool is that? Also, cauliflower helps reduce inflammation and also the risk of cancer and heart disease. So cauliflower is definitely another superfood that we should be eating and adding into our day, whether it's steamed, raw, dipped in some delicious ranch, or added to things such as our rice dishes, our potato dishes. I highly recommend cauliflower. And again, don't worry about buying it organic. And number 15 is another WW tried and true, and that is broccoli. 70% of broccoli tested contained little or no pesticide residue. So that's amazing. Broccoli is something I eat all the time, and I was thinking that I would have to buy that organic, which I am still, again, going to buy it organic, but it actually falls on the clean 15. And broccoli is another vegetable that is extremely good for you. So in broccoli, it first of all, broccoli reduces inflammation and cancer risk. It is extremely, extremely high in vitamin C and vitamin K. 
Vitamin C, if you eat broccoli, one cup of broccoli, you get 135% of your recommended daily intake of vitamin C in one cup of broccoli. Also, in vitamin K, you get 116% of your recommended daily intake. That's amazing. So broccoli, if you're going to choose a vegetable, cauliflower and broccoli are the top notches. They are the best vegetables to choose. They are zero smart points and you can have as much as you want and they are full of nutrients and vitamins and they help reduce things like inflammation and heart risk and cancer risk. How awesome is that? Vegetables or produce in general are so important in your diet. They are a clean, whole food that should be incorporated with every single meal, whether they are on the Dirty Dozen organic list or the Clean 15 conventional list. So that is it, my friends. That is my first video in my Clean Eating 101 series. I thought it was extremely important that we deep dive into what the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 are. I got a lot of questions when I switched over to clean eating, especially when I was talking a little bit about the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 in my grocery haul. I got a lot of comments like, what is that? I wanna know about this, what should I buy organic, what shouldn't I buy organic, and there you have it. It is super important to remember that the Dirty Dozen should solely be purchased organic to prevent putting pesticides in your body that first of all shouldn't be in your body, and secondly, can cause things like inflammation and cancer risk and heart risk where you buy the clean 15 conventional and you're safe and you don't have to worry about putting an excess amount of pesticides into your body. Now, if you're like me and you want to move completely over to organic, that's even better. You're going to avoid things like GMO that is in a lot of the fruits and vegetables on the conventional market. But if you want to save yourself some money and you just want to focus on the dirty dozen for organic, I think that that's a great start to eat better, to eat more clean and more whole foods. And again, you should again be incorporating fruits and vegetables into all of your meals and your snacks for that matter. You should be eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. They are so good for you. They're filling. And as we saw, they are full of vitamins and heart healthy properties. So next video will be a little bit more about clean eating and we're gonna have quite the series here. We are gonna be talking all things clean eating. So stay tuned for the next video in the Clean Eating 101 series. If you have some ideas for me, please comment down below and leave those things that you wanna know about clean eating. I'm definitely planning on doing a what I eat in a day with 23 blue smart points or 30 green or 16 purple the minimum amount that you get so that I can show you guys that although I get more points than that, you can still eat clean and whole foods on the minimum number of smart points of all three plans that WW gives us. So that is something that I'm gonna be having part of this series as well as I'm going to do a seven days what I eat in a day vlog where I'm gonna be showing you what I ate for seven days within my points that is clean, whole, good for you food. So I have a lot of fun videos coming out. So make sure if you're new that you're subscribed and that your little bell notification is turned on. That way you're not missing a single video in this series or any other video for that matter. Give this video a thumbs up if you're all here for the clean eating tips and leave your comments down below with what videos you guys would like to see in this series or any video ideas when it comes to WW or clean eating. I love getting your guys' feedback and it just helps me put out the types of videos that you wanna see. And again, thank you guys so much for spending some time with me. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.